In this video, we are going to be learning about the basic building block of all pleats, which is the knife pleat. So what is a knife pleat? Well, you've probably seen a knife pleat before. These are knife pleats. They're pleats that are all going the same directions. And there's a couple of different ways we can do knife pleats. You can have your knife pleats like these three, where they're butted up against each other. This is very common, especially on skirts. But you can also have knife pleats that have a little bit of space between each pleat, like these two here. And there's different ways that you can go about achieving this look on your garment. So there's two major ways to figure this part out of how big are your pleats. The first method is just to do kind of a draping method. So you fold a pleat like that and go, uh, yeah, sure, that's, that's the size I want. And you stick a pin in. Okay, I want another pleat and I want about that much gap between them. Okay, cool. That is another pleat. So this is kind of the draping method. I just kind of did it. You would then, if you're using this method, you always wanna go back and check the measurements that you made. So like this pleat is about uh, five eighths deep, but this one over here is almost a whole inch deep. So they're not the same. I'd need to go back and split the difference between these two so they came out all nice and evenly. But there is another method for doing that and we're gonna do the math method. I do, whenever I'm doing a garment, I do kind of do the draping method when I'm figuring out the pattern at first just to see what I like and then I go into the math portion. So how do we do the math on pleats? Well, here's how. So the first number you need to figure out is your pleat depth. So that's how wide your pleat is. So for example, let's say we wanted a pleat that was about that big. Okay, so let's measure that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my ruler in between these layers all the way to where it's folded. Okay, this pleat is one and five eighths deep. So that's my pleat depth on this one. Okay, let's do another one. I'm gonna do a little smaller one. All right, yeah, I like that size. So let's see what depth that is. Okay, that's three fourths of an inch. But for this particular sample, I want to do a pleat depth of half an inch, okay? So half an inch is the pleat depth that I'm gonna be using for this sample, okay? So that means that my pleats are this big, right there, okay? So, we know how deep our pleats are. Now we need to know how much fabric we need to create that pleat. Because what's happening is we're folding our pleats and we're taking up fabric by doing that. Okay, so what is the total of this space just right here? Well, it is your pleat depth times two, which is the total amount needed. Okay, so if I have a pleat depth of half an inch, which is what I wanna do, half an inch, times two equals one inch. So it's one inch total of fabric that I am using to create a half inch pleat, okay? So that's the first step of the calculations. That's just how you measure how much you need for one pleat. Now, depending on your piece, you need to know the spacing so these three pleats all butt up against each other, but there's space between this one and this one. So we need to know how close these are. So if we're gonna do, this is how I'm gonna do my sample. I'm gonna do my sample with my pleats right up against each other, okay? So the distance from right here to right here is what I need to know to get these all butted up against each other, okay? So that, that ends up making this math really easy. So um, the spacing is half an inch because that is the same as my pleat depth. If you don't want a gap between your pleats, your spacing is the same as your pleat depth. Okay, so let's do this full calculation. All right, so the marks that I need is my pleat depth, which I should actually write the number and not just the letters. So my pleat depth, is half an inch times two means I need an inch total. And I'll show you how I mark this out in a second. Okay, so I need an inch total 
plus my spacing amount, which means every pleat, I'm gonna be putting marks that are one and a half inches apart, grand total, okay? Now this is kind of getting confusing, so let me show demonstrate how we're gonna actually do this, okay? So first I'm gonna start off by drawing my seam allowance line, because we need to know where we're stitching this. When you do pleats, you need to know where you're stitching because you're gonna baste your pleats in before you stitch it down. Okay, so for the purposes of demonstration, I'm actually gonna start in the middle of this piece and do markings toward the right and towards the left so you can see you can go both directions with your marking. So this piece is seven inches long, so three and a half. That is the very center. Okay, so I want a pleat that starts here and goes this direction. All right, so let's get, get my math handy so you can see that at the same time. All right, so the total amount I need for a pleat is one inch. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna mark one inch over. This is the distance of my pleat, okay? Now I'm gonna fold my pleats so that they fold this direction. I'm gonna make an arrow that tells me that this line gets folded to this line, okay? Also notice I'm making all of these marks in my seam allowance. I'm not taking them down here. I will in a few minutes so that I can get all of these nicely pleated, but for right now, my main marks are all occurring in my seam allowance. Okay, so there's my pleat depth. There's one pleat. Now, since I want my pleats to butt up right against each other, just like these are, I need to add half an inch, okay? So half an inch over from there is right here. Now I'm not gonna put any markings right here because this is my gap. This line is the start, oop, I just broke my pencil. This line is the start of a new pleat, okay? So I can either from here just go over one inch or I can move my ruler down and measure one inch, okay? So from here to here, is one pleat and I want to fold my pleats going all the same direction okay all right so I've got two pleats here and I don't have enough space for one more pleat so I'm gonna start marking this way so here's a full pleat here's a full pleat and there's a space now I need space over here before my next pleat my spacing is half an inch because I want my pleats to butt up against each other so half an inch, and I'm gonna add one more inch. There's my pleat. Again, knife pleats go the same direction. I add my space plus my pleat. Okay, and now I've run out of room. I don't have space for another pleat off of this end, okay? Now this full calculation you use, this one and a half total, if you've got knife pleats that are all butting up against each other, this is how you calculate the full amount that you need. So if you were making a skirt that you wanted knife pleated and they were all butted up against you, you need one and a half inches for every pleat, okay? So there's more math that goes into that, but we're not gonna deal with that at the moment because we can also look that up later, okay? All right, so now I have my markings for all of my pleats. Now this part I did in the seam allowance and I've drawn all of these lines if I was doing this on a real garment, I would use something like chalk or um, I might even use a pencil. But for this next step on an actual garment, I would use some sort of removable marking like a Frixon pen or chalk or a water soluble marker um, because this next step, I don't want these lines to stay on the garment. For your sample, please use pencil because I do wanna see these lines. I wanna see how well you match them up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to extend each one of these lines all the way down. So I'm using this straight edge with my seam line so that I know that my lines are going straight down at a right angle. Okay, so I'm just transferring all of the lines straight down. This makes the folding portion of pleats a lot easier.
And you could do all of these measurements and marks all in one go, um, but I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. Pleats can get very complicated very quickly. But once you've done them, they're really not that bad. It's just the first time doing them, they get kind of weird. Like, what's happening? I don't know how this is gonna work. Trust me, this is gonna work. Okay, so I've got all of my lines. So the next step I need to do is I need to take this to the iron and I'm gonna press all of this together to create pleats. Now, before I do that, I do wanna point out one thing. I've got all of my arrows going this direction. On a garment, you would wanna be making all of these lines on the wrong side of the fabric. So since my arrows are going this way, when I flip it to the right side, it's actually gonna be my pleats going the opposite direction. You do need to check if you're working with a draper which direction their arrows mean. I'm keeping it simple for the purpose of pleating, but usually when I am doing an actual pattern, my arrows are facing the direction I want them to look from the right side. So these arrows would actually be going the opposite direction on one of my pieces, typically speaking. Okay, so let's take this to the iron and we'll see how this actually comes together so that knife pleats make more sense. So now let's actually press all of these pleats in. So I'm gonna actually start on this side and work across from here because it's a little easier for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this line because see my arrow tells me that this line matches this line and I'm gonna fold it over to match this one line. Since this is small enough to hold with my fingers, I'm just gonna hold with my fingers and then press it with the iron. And now it's all nice and flat, okay? Now I'm gonna do the next thing. Here is the line, there's the arrow. Pick up this end and fold my lines to match, okay? A little off at the top there, there we go. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna do that again. Take this line, bring it to the next one. Now, if you'll notice as I'm doing this, our stitch line is staying the same right across the top, which is really, really great. If I was working on something a lot long, a lot larger, I would end up pinning these as I went along um, just to make things a little easier. Okay, so I'm gonna take this last one and bring it to this edge. Okay, so this last one's a little wonky because I end up not having seam allowance sticking out at the end and that's okay for the purpose of this sample. Okay, all right, so now you can see that the pleats are all going the same direction. Let me grab my pins. Because before I remove this from the table, I wanna pin through these pleats so they stay in place. Okay, just like that. Now normally we do pin on our seam line going that direction, but with pleats to baste, I find it a lot easier to pin this direction for basting. And then I just remove my pins as I go, okay? So there we go. So all of our arrows said to make our lines match up going that direction. So I'm gonna flip this over and I want you to notice which direction the pleats are going. So this on the wrong side, they're going that direction. But we flip them over to the right direction. Oh, they're going, they're going the same way. Huh. Okay, that's right, I forgot that. So the knife pleats go this direction, okay? All right, so we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and what we're gonna do is we're gonna baste right on this stitch line. You can use a regular stitch or a basting stitch, but typically when you're constructing a garment, you would just do a basting stitch right on the stitch line because then this piece would go into something else. All right, so we're gonna baste this in and then we'll be done. So now I have basted my pleats together and you can see they can kind of accordion out like this. And those are knife pleats. All right, so let's move on to the next kind of pleat.